Hello and welcome to another TLDI UK video. You might have noticed a fair bit of unrest in the UK over the last year or so. Whether that's coming from Extinction Rebellion, anti-lockdown protesters, Black Lives Matter, anti-vaxxers, or those trying to remember the life of Sarah Everand this weekend. It seems that the government's had enough though, with the emergence of the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill. This might sound boring and inconsequential, but the bill has already proved controversial, especially in how it attempts to shut down protests and protesters. So with the bill passing its second reading on Tuesday, we thought we ought to explore what the bill does and whether it really shuts down the right to protest in Britain. Before we start, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We're getting slowly closer to 500,000 subscribers, and considering how many of you haven't subscribed yet, we could get there pretty soon. So lend us a hand and make sure you never miss one of our videos again by hitting subscribe and ringing the bell. Thanks so much for your support. So this bill has been controversial for quite a few reasons. Broadly, people seem to take issue with four particular aspects of this bill. In order of apparent controversy, those aspects are 1. It gives the state more powers to stop protests. 2. It makes being a public nuisance a statutory offence. 3. It increases sentences for damaging statues and memorials. And 4. It gives the state more powers to prosecute gypsies and travellers. We're going to go through each of these, explain why they've upset people, and then explain the government's defence. First things first, let's talk about protests, and I hope you like lists, because this bill gives the state wider powers in four key areas. Firstly, previously the police had special powers to intervene only in major marches, but now all of those extended powers also apply to static protests and single-person protests. Secondly, the police can now restrict protests in order to prevent impact. Previously, police could only do this to prevent disorder, damage, disruption, and intimidation. But this has now been extended to include impact, which sounds suspiciously vague to us. Thirdly, you can now be prosecuted for protesting illegally, even if you weren't aware of the law. Previously, you could only be prosecuted if you were knowingly breaking the law. Now you can be prosecuted if it's decided that you ought to have known the law. Fourthly, the police are now allowed to stop protests for being too noisy. And this isn't defined objectively, but only when noise may result in serious disruption to the activities of an organisation. If this wasn't vague enough already, the bill also allows for the Home Secretary to quite literally define serious disruption however they want, via statutory instruments. And because these statutory instruments don't require parliamentary approval, and the police can now shut down disruptive protests, the Home Secretary can cancel pretty much any protest they don't like. So that's what the bill does for protests. On to public nuisance. Being a public nuisance was already a crime, but only in common law. This means that there's no explicit regulation about it, and the sentences issued depend on historical precedent. This bill, however, would make public nuisance a statutory offence, with a maximum sentence of 10 years. However, this bill would also expand the definition of public nuisance to include annoyance, which means that you could go to jail for being publicly annoying, unless you can provide a reasonable excuse. To be fair to the government here, the Law Commission did recommend making public nuisance a statutory offence in 2015, but the Law Commission didn't say anything about annoyance or a maximum sentence of 10 years. So that's what the bill does for public nuisances. On to memorials. Previously, if you damaged a memorial or statue, you could be charged for the damage, up to £5,000, as well as being handed down a maximum prison sentence of three months. This bill increases that maximum to ten years. This means that if you spray paint something on Churchill, you could now go to jail for up to ten years. Of course, this is the maximum sentence, and most sentences would end up being less than that which does make this kind of comparison ultimately quite misleading. But nonetheless, it is a big step up, and it's easy to see why some people might think it's disproportionate. Finally, gypsies and travellers. Previously, police could only remove gypsies and travellers if they caused damage to land, used threatening violence, or had more than five vehicles on the land. Now the police are allowed to remove gypsies and travellers if they think that significant distress to the public is likely to be caused, and only one vehicle now needs to be on the land. 
This means that gypsies don't actually have to do anything wrong. The police just have to suspect that they're likely to do something wrong. All right, so that's why people have found this bill controversial. But what has the government had to say in response? Well, judging by the Commons debate on Monday evening, the government's response seems to mainly involve claiming that this bill protects women and girls. I now call the Home Secretary. Priti Patel. Yeah. With permission, Mr Speaker, I would like to make a statement on the tragic death of Sarah Everard and the events of Saturday evening. I would like to begin by saying that my thoughts and prayers are with Sarah's family and friends at this unbearable time. I have already said that some of the footage circulating online of Clapham Common is upsetting. I asked the Metropolitan Police for a report into what had happened. But I would like to emphasise, Mr Speaker, that this government is committed when it comes to violence against women and girls at the highest level. And when you look at, in fact, the work of this government over the last decade, and if I may, Mr Speaker, I'd like to pay tribute to my right honourable friend, the member for Maidenhead, for all her work, because she was the one that really set the bar high. This government is building upon that, and no one can ignore that simple fact. Um, but the fact of the matter is we want this bill to receive royal assent. It should do very soon. We need it to happen to safeguard more and more women and give the protection that they desperately need from their, from their abusers. Now, this is true because the bill does increase the minimum time that people found guilty of serious crimes like rape and sexual assault have to spend in prison from half their sentence to two thirds of it. But ultimately, that's not the part that people are finding controversial. The government have also claimed that this bill was always in their manifesto. With regards to the police, crime, sentencing and courts bill, that is a manifesto bill that this government was elected on. It is not ill-conceived at all. The British public voted for it. We live in a democracy and this government will work to deliver on that. Again, this is sort of half true, because while the 2019 Conservative manifesto does include stuff about tougher sentencing and clamping down on travellers' camps, it doesn't say anything about protesters, which is the most controversial part of this bill. Basically, the government seems to just pretend that the protest parts of the bill don't exist. Now, perhaps this would have worked a week or so ago. But in the aftermath of the scenes at the Sarah Everand vigil, giving the police even more powers when it comes to protests is obviously going to be super controversial. Anyway, the government have continued to defend it in statements such as these. The fundamental issue that we have to address is that women must feel that when uh, they make serious complaints uh, that they are properly heard and properly addressed and we're going to make sure that that happens. This is actually about the silent majority, promises made in our manifesto, law and order and the need for taking this country to where it needs to be. To me this is one of the most pro law and order bills passed in recent decades. Now then, no one should feel unsafe in our country and this bill will be of great comfort to law abiding British people. If you cannot live by the rules of our society, then you should live in a place that has a different set of rules, and that place is prison. And the good news is we are recruiting 10,000 extra prison officers, 20,000 new police officers, and we are building more prisons. Not everyone takes such an enthusiastic law and order stance, though, with former Prime Minister and former Home Secretary Theresa May holding her own party to account during the debate. But I do have some concerns about some of the aspects of public order. I absolutely accept that the police have got for certain challenges, for example, when people glue themselves to vehicles or the gates of, of Parliament. But freedom of speech is an important right in our democracy, yeah, yeah. however annoying or uncomfortable sometimes that might be. And I know there will be people who will have seen scenes of protests and will have said, why isn't the government doing something? To which the answer, in many cases, may simply be because we live in a democratic, free yeah, yeah. society. So the first area I would uh, mention is the giving police the powers to deal with static protests in the way that they have been able to deal with marches, because these have always been differentiated in the, in the past. The second is around noise and nuisance, because some of the definitions do look quite wide, and I think they go, I would urge the government to look at those definitions. And finally, my point is about the, the power for the Home Secretary to um, make regulations about the meaning of serious disruption to the activities of an organisation or the life of the community. It's tempting with Home Secretary to think that giving powers to the Home Secretary is very reasonable because we all think we're reasonable. But actually future Home Secretaries may not be so reasonable. So there are very important elements of this bill, but I would urge the government to consider carefully the need to walk a fine line between being popular 
and populist. Our freedoms depend on it. So that's the government's defence of this controversial bill that seeks to make serious changes to protests. Changes which fundamentally give ministers more power, as well as cracking down on statue vandals and travellers. But what do you think of this bill? Has the government gone too far, or are you convinced by their logic? Is it actually necessary to protect women and statues alike? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.